this book is such an iconic part of German culture and history, basically. So everyone knows what's in there. And then I started reading it and was straight into the first battle scene and kind of anticipating what would be coming at us. We couldn't have done it without Edward Berger, the director. He has a huge passion for sound and wild tracks. What we really tried to achieve was follow the protagonist's experience as much as we can. As someone who's in those situations, you can't take everything in all the time. So we have to make those choices for the audience. I did a lot of research on the sound of World War One, and there are really obviously you know, no recordings, no real ones. And I found letters that soldiers would write back to their loved ones at home, and they described the terror of the sound and how that affected them. And they gave even certain grenades nicknames and stuff like that. That made us come to the decision, we're not going to even try to be scientifically accurate in a way. You know, what's the point for a film like this? So we just decided we're going to do whatever is emotionally necessary to put the audience into Paul Boimer's shoes. It was the muddiest place in the world. Okay, let's get the camera on one guy. We had like the screening before we started. That, that was the first impression I got. Watching the film, like, I, I really started to feel cold, um, just seeing these conditions. And um, we definitely wanted to, to, to preserve that. I have 40 men who are much crepeering. Steigen Sie sofort auf. The actions were very wild. Actors were running, crawling, pointing guns, shouting, or whispering, all in one take. <laughs> The microphone in the costume wasn't always usable. That's why we made a special adjustments to the helmets for the radio mic. Even if some actor fell on his microphone, we stripped that out onto an extra track to use it as, you know, part of the body fold. All that original kind of noise and the unwanted stuff that you usually throw out, that was actually the stuff that we try to use to our advantage. We destroyed only one microphone. <laughs> we also had a lot of play with elements like the barbed wire that keeps dangling in, in the wind. As in sonic uh, analogy for um, the soldiers shivering. Edward was very much into certain transitions. Like in the scene when, when Paul sees his friend Pop being burnt with the flamethrowers, we really focus in on only what Paul would be hearing, which is just his friend and nothing else. <laughs> And we had to look for all these moments, how to scale the battlefield up and down. Cut, cut, cut. After almost every scene, we needed to record anything else just for sound. Edward even directed the extras or did the follies himself. Uh, it was amazing. It was great shooting. If I would have to name one single outstanding thing about the work on this film. It was really the collaboration between Edward and Victor on set and Edward and us in post. That is really nice. The director is always the key to this. He encouraged us to go to the limits. Run, 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 Run. 